In the previous sections, we've learned rules of how to take the derivative of a constant. We've learned the power rule, the product rule, and the quotient rule. In this section, we're going to look at what's called the chain rule. And the reason why that's called is because basically there's a chain reaction, a chain of events. And so this is also called the general power rule. If you look, it says if you take the derivative of a function raised to a power, we're going to use the power rule. We bring the power down in front. We subtract 1 from that power. So what's the different part? Well, because now this part, which I'm going to call the inside, we have to take the derivative of that as well. So let's look at this first example. I want to take the derivative. So I'm going to leave that constant out front. I'm going to look at this part, which is in the format of a function of x raised to a power. So I bring the power down in front, keep what's inside the parentheses, then decrease the power by 1. But now the new part is, is I have to take the derivative of this function. So the derivative of x to the fourth, we're going to use the power rule. And then the derivative of negative 5, of course, is 0. So let's multiply some stuff together. And then I'm going to combine that by multiplying 18 times 4. And that would be your final answer. All right, this example, same thing, except this time we have a negative exponent, but that really doesn't change things. All right, so again, I'm going to leave that half out in front. I'm going to bring down my power, keep what's inside the parentheses, and then decrease the power by 1. And then we're going to take the derivative of the function that's being raised to the original power. So we, the derivative of 2x squared is going to be 4x. Remember, just the power rule. Bring the 2 down in front, multiplying by the 2 that's already there. And then the derivative of 1x is just 1. All right, so let's multiply that together. And we could leave it like that. Same type now. So we've had a whole power, a negative power. Let's use a fraction power. So bring down the power in front leaving the parentheses exactly like it is. Subtracting 1 from a half is going to give me positive 1 half. And then we want to take the derivative of this part. And so we're just going to apply the power rule and the constant rule. And no, you don't really need to write that 0. Just want to emphasize that it is there. Now, a lot of times, this parenthesis will be written before the other parenthesis, but as you know, multiplication is commutative. It really doesn't matter what order that multiplication is in. All right, so here we see a square root. Remember that the square root is the same as the half power. So we would automatically rewrite this function as 2x squared minus 2x plus 3 raised to the half power. And then when I take the derivative, I'm going to do exactly what I just did. This time when I subtract 1, I'm going to get negative half. All right, and now I need to take the derivative of that. Again, this is an acceptable answer, but I do want you to notice that this half and those even numbers, and there's only a single power, that you might want to go ahead and multiply that half times there, but you don't have to. The quotient rule is really for a function of x divided by a function of x. Since we just have a constant, I think the easiest way to write this problem would be 7 times x squared minus 5 raised to the negative 6 power. We can bring it up to the top, and then I can apply the chain rule. So leave the 7 and multiply by the negative 6, take the derivative of the inside, I'm going to go ahead and multiply that together, although don't really have to, but why not? Okay, so this would be okay, but since our problem started out as a fraction, let's see if we could write this as a fraction. Doing the opposite, when we bumped this up and made it a negative 6, if this is a negative 7, we can take that to the denominator. So either of these answers would be acceptable. All right, same type thing. We have a constant, but this time we have that. Remember, that's a cube root, so this is really 4 over 2x squared plus x 
raised to the one-third power. I don't want to use the quotient rule because I have a constant, and so I'm going to rewrite this just like the last problem. I'm going to bump this to the top and make that negative one-third. Now I'm ready to take the derivative. Okay, if I subtract one from negative one-third, I get negative four-thirds. Then I need to take the derivative of that part. we have two functions added together. Um, how do I take the derivative of that? Well, I'm going to take the derivative of this and I'm going to add it to the derivative of that. Using the power rule, now applying the chain rule, the derivative of 2x is just 2, the derivative of 1 is 0, so I just need to multiply that times 2. Add it to the derivative of this, and again taking, applying that chain rule. So let's see what I have. Okay, 4 times 2 is 8. That's where I'm getting that. And that's how I would leave my answer. All right? So we pretty much have the same thing here. Again, you want to take the derivative of that. Then we just add. If it was subtract, we just have a subtraction sign. All right, now let's clean this up. Now notice this 3 halves times 2, the 2's would reduce. And then, let's see, same thing here. We have this 2 and that 2. That reduces out. All right, and since that's going to be a negative 3, I'm just going to write it as negative 3. Don't leave out that x. That looks good enough. All right, now notice this time we don't have plus, we have times. So we actually have to use the product rule in conjunction with the chain rule. So we have to be very careful. Remember when we set up the product rule, I believe I used u and v. I'm going to do the same thing. All right, so I'm going to let u be this first function. I'm going to let v be the second function. All right, and then just take those as two separate problems. Taking the derivative, just don't forget to take the derivative of the inside part, and I would go ahead and clean that up before I went any further. What we have is we have u, we have u prime, the derivative, v and v prime. And remember the product rule says that we want to multiply the first times the derivative of the second and add it to the second times the derivative of the first. So let's see if we can get this all right. Just because this monomial's out in front looks prettier. Add it to, same thing here, I'm going to start out with the 10x. Now you can stop there, but we really need to take some time here for future purposes of how to learn to simplify that answer. I want to talk about the greatest common factor. If you look at this expression and this expression, they have some things that are alike. All right, so let's see. First of all, let's look at the monomial, 32 and 10. Those are both divisible by 2. I'm going to take out a 2. Then they both have an x. What else do they have in common? They have a 1 minus 2x squared to the factor, and they also have a 5 plus x squared factor. But to what power? Let's see, we have a 7 here, and we have an 8 here. When you take out the greatest common factor, you want to take out the smallest exponent. That's how many they have in common. All right, so as I look, compare the 5 to the 4, of course, the 4 is smallest. So that's the greatest common factor. That's the GCF. So what do we have left when we take that out of this first expression, meaning we're going to divide? Well, 2 goes into negative 32 16 times. We'd have no x's. We've taken out all the 1 minus 2x squares. But let's see, I took out 4 of these. I had 5, so that left me with just 1, if you will plus 2 goes into 10 5 times. The x's reduce. Um, let's see, 5 plus x squared, 5 plus x squared, they both are to the fourth, so I took it all out. But the 7 and 8 means I have 1 left. All right? Now, you're saying that's not any better, but it will be in the future. But let me emphasize that you could have stopped here, and that would be okay, but we just need to practice about that greatest common factor. All right, so the last one we had, the product rule, 
notice we also now have a quotient and we also we have a quotient of a function of x divided by a function of x so we've got this going on and that going on but I can't divide the top and the bottom I guess I could I could put both of them to the third power that's one way of looking at it so but I'm going to look at the chain rule first the chain rule says to bring down the power keep the parentheses just as it is and then one less now I now have to take the derivative of that and this is where I need the quotient rule right so remember we did top and bottom we did it in alphabetical order so we started with the bottom here's the top then I took the derivative took the derivative and remember, let's see, it is bottom times the derivative of the top minus the top times the derivative of the bottom over the bottom squared. All right, so now I'm taking the derivative of this, this part right here using the quotient rule. All right, so let's start again. The bottom times the derivative of the top minus the top times the derivative of the bottom over the bottom squared. Now that looks pretty messy, but I think we should really keep going and see what happens. I'm going to keep that 3. That's all to the third power. Let's see. This is going to be x minus 2 minus x minus 3, distributing the minus sign, over x minus 2 squared. Let's take the numerator for a minute. This is going to be x plus 3. Is that squared or cubed? Okay, and then here, x minus x is 0, and negative 2 minus 3 is negative 5. Now on the bottom, what do we have? We have x minus 2, we have squared and squared, so this is really to the fourth power. So this really kind of cleans up to this final answer. So you really need to start simplifying somewhat. Right now, notice this is also a quotient, but we have different powers. So I'm going to use the quotient rule. I'm going to start with the bottom. The quotient rule here. I've already used the chain rule within each part of here, so the quotient rule says the bottom times the derivative of the top minus the top times the derivative of the bottom, all divided by the bottom squared. Okay, the bottom was this, and then I would need to square that. So remember, this is my derivative. Wow. I could leave it like that but I really want to practice that simplification. All right, so notice, let's see, what all we got going on? I want you to notice this, this, and this. All three of these have some, all of those are the same. This is to the fourth power, this is cubed, and this is going to end up being to the eighth power. So we could reduce these and divide out three of them. Let's see what that would look like. Okay, if I took three away from there, that would leave me one of them. If I took all three out, those would all go away. Remember, just subtract the exponents. And if I took three out of the eight, that would leave me to the five on the bottom. So all of a sudden, that, that looks a whole bunch better. Now, again, you could stop there, but let's just keep going on the top. Let's take out a greatest common factor. Let's look at this numerator and ask yourself what do they have in common? Well 18x and 8x they're both divisible by a 2x uh, then they both have a 3x squared plus 2 and to the smallest power would be 3x squared plus 2 squared so what would that leave me? 2 goes into 18 9 times there'd be no more x's still got that x squared minus 1 took all of that 2 goes into 8 4 times and I have one of these left. So again, we could have stopped up here, 
more importantly, I want you to see what that quotient rule holds. Now this example is just another example of the product rule, but it's also going to allow us to practice our algebra. So you can hopefully see that we have a product here. So I'm going to choose the first one as 2x plus 3 squared, and my second function, this. Then we need to take the derivative, bringing down the 2, decreasing the exponent by 1, and then taking the derivative of the inside part. here, bringing down the exponent in front, decreasing the exponent by 1, and then taking the derivative of the inside part, cleaning that up a bit. Now my product rule says I need to multiply those together, multiply those together, and then add that result. All right, so that's what I'm going to do. So that's that one, and then the other way, and again it doesn't matter which order you write this in. So that's an okay answer, but now let's practice GCF. What do these have in common? So as you look at this group and this group, what do they have in common? Hopefully you see that they have a factor of 3x squared minus 1, and they also have a factor of 2x plus 3. In addition, those are both even, so they're divisible by 2. So our GCF is a 2 a 3x squared minus 1 to the smallest power, which is negative 4. Yes, negative 4 is smaller than negative 3. And then a 2x plus 3 to the smallest power, which would be to the first. So if I wanted to take out that GCF, that means I would divide each of these by that GCF. And let's see what that's left. So 2 goes into negative 18, negative 9. It would leave that x. The those would go away. However, if I divide 2x plus 3 to the second by 2x plus 3, that's going to leave me a 2x plus 3. Now let's look at the second one. I need a plus because of this. 2 goes into 4 2 times. And then the 2x plus 3's, those would cancel. The question is, is what exponent goes here? Well, one way to look at it is negative 4 plus what is a negative 3. That's a positive 1. Another way, if we were to divide those two quantities, it says to keep the base and add the ex I'm sorry, keep the base and subtract the exponents. So negative 3 minus a negative 4 is positive 1. So a couple of different ways to look at that. So cleaning up our answer just a bit, I'm going to distribute here and have negative 18x and negative 27x plus 6x squared minus 2. And I just caught a mistake. Negative 9x and 2x, that would be 18x squared. So just to keep going, again this is just a good practice of our algebra skills. So collecting like terms, that's negative 12x squared oops, minus 27x minus 2. Those are not alike. So that would be a final answer, but just to come back and say if you had stopped up here, that would have been okay too, but it's kind of nice to know how to do that GCF.